Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depends on where in the world you're tuning in from. If this is your first time here to fellowship with us, I want to welcome you to the Sanctuary of Manna from Heaven Ministries. I'm Overseer Michael Armstrong, and you're in the place right now where the Spirit of the Lord dwells. And we know where the Spirit of the Lord dwells, that means there is liberty. You can lift your hands, you can open your mouth, you can give God a shout of praise, you can say, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, bless the name of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times, for his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Amen. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God is doing in this season. And if you haven't felt it yet, this year is almost over. And I know God has been doing some great things in your life. He's given you more than one reason enough to just lift your hands. One reason more than enough to say, thank you, Jesus. One reason. He gave you more than one reason to celebrate him. And I, if you hadn't, then take the opportunity to do so now. Because you may not get that chance again. But I'm telling you that I know. I don't know what it's been where you've been, what you've been doing, but I know that the hand and the favor of God has been upon your life, and he's brought you a mighty long way. He's brought you a mighty, not from the time you were born, but just during this week, this past week that you just went through, you don't know what the hand of God held back from you, so from, from the enemy wanting to do to you, so you can lift your hands, you can open your mouth, and give God a shout of praise. Amen? Amen. Now listen, if you've been here before, others are already doing it. They're tagging this message, they're sending it out, they're letting people know where they're coming in from, what part of the world they're tuning in from uh, right now to fellowship with us here at Manor from Heaven Ministries. So as you're doing so, if you want to do so, let somebody know where you're coming in from. As you can see, we have our family members that join us every week. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. They come in from South Africa, from, from the bottom part of South Africa, which is Cape Town. They come in from Cape Town. They come in from Johannesburg. They come in from Pretoria. They come in all the way up from Durban. We thank God for you. We thank God for Lusaka, Zambia. We thank God for them in, in Nairobi, Kenya, Mubasa, Kenya. In Uganda, Kampala, Uganda, we thank God that you thought not of yourself to come to fellowship with us here at Manor from Heaven Ministries. I know you could be doing something else with your time right now in uh, Accra, Ghana, in the Volta region of Ghana, but you thought not of yourself in uh, Gambia to come to fellowship with us here from Zimbabwe. We thank God for you. We thank God for our family members who find it not a robbery to join us from Ethiopia, from the Philippines, as far as Sydney, Australia, Brisbane, Australia. We thank God for you. And we didn't forget about you here in America where we are in North America all the way up for, uh, uh, from Canada, Toronto, Canada all the way down here to uh, Florida Orlando, Florida where I am far east is New York City, far west is California the island of Jamaica, we thank God for you, we thank God for our family members who join in, they come in from uh, Portland Antonio, they come in from Portland they come in from um, uh, excuse me uh, 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 Kingston, Jamaica, we thank God for you. We thank God. I know you could be doing something else with your time, but you thought not of yourself the fellowship of us. And I didn't. I hope you didn't hear, uh, come in now to be bored by me, but I want to give you the word of God. And if that's what you came to hear today, the word of God, then you're not going to be disappointed. And as I said, if you're tagging this message, letting someone else know that Manna from Heaven Ministries is on live now, then this is the place to be. Do that and get back here because I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer and I'm just going to let the Holy Spirit do what he does in this atmosphere let him have his way in this place, not just where I'm seated, but where you are also, because we serve an omnipresent God. Amen. And we know that his spirit is just moving. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So I thank you for just thinking out of yourself the fellowship of us here. Now, without any more delay, I want to open us up with a word of prayer. And again, we're just going to allow the, the Holy Spirit to have his way. Amen. Amen. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for this opportunity that we have to come to assemble ourselves. Lord, your word lets us know where two or more are gathered in your name there you are in the midst of them so we thank you Lord and knowing that you're not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you need to repent father you sent your word and it healed them you sent your word and it set the captives free and when there's nothing else to stand on Lord we can stand on your word because your word is infallible and your word cannot come back to you until it accomplishes the thing that you sent it to do we thank you right now father we thank you that that, that you've given us this opportunity to come to lift our cares before you to Come to seat in your, uh, at the feet of your throne, O oh Lord, to seat at the foot of your altar and to hear from heaven here today. And Father, it is my desire, Lord, my prayer, that as this word is going forward today, that someone will have a closer walk with you. It is my prayer, my desire, that someone will be delivered, that someone will be set free, that someone will be healed in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just bless you and I praise you and I thank you right now. I ask you, Lord, to allow me to decrease as you increase. Have your way 
in this vessel, Lord. Use me for your purpose. Use me for your glory. Use me right now, Father, that those who are assembled, even though they see this vessel, Lord, allow them to hear the voice of God through this vessel. May you be magnified. May you be glorified. May you be blessed right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for being the air that we breathe. We thank you for being the water that we drink. We thank you, Lord, for being the bread of life that we live on. And we know that man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit, which comes to remind us of the words of God and continues to draw us nearer to you. We thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed that allows us to come into the presence of a holy God. For it had not been for the blood of Jesus, we could not come before a holy God. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you. And I pray right now that you will continue to be magnified throughout this service here today. May your name be forever lifted on high. May your children forever be blessed. And may you continue to have your way in this sanctuary, not just where I'm seated, but where your children have assembled from the north to south, the east and the west around this globe that you created. Magnify your presence in their prayer room. Now is my prayer in Christ Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Amen again. Hallelujah. Listen, we got the uh, uh, the prayer out the way. I want to give you an opener scripture. I just want the Holy Spirit to continue to just uh, move in this atmosphere. I pray that he's not just moving where I am, but you can feel him where you are also. You can feel him without a shadow of a doubt. You know that you're in the presence of the true and living God. Amen? Amen. All right, listen. Our opening scripture is going to come from the book of Colossians. It's going to be chapter Colossians chapter 1, verses 25 through 27. I'm going to be reading to you from the New American Standard uh, Bible. Bible. It may sound different than the version that you would have before you, but we're going to get the results that God intended us to get. Now, I may deviate away from the, um, the New American Standard Bible as I give you different verses, version uh, of, the, of the text, but we're still going to get the results that God intends us to get. So you write these down. You keep them close to you. I hope you go back and you review your notes. Even after the service is over, I hope you go back and review your notes. That, that this way you'll get a, a clearer walk with God, a clearer understanding. Amen? Amen. All right. So Colossians chapter 1, verse 25 through 27, New American Standard Bible, and it reads, I was made a minister of this, of this church according to the commission from God granted to me for your benefit, so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. That is the mystery which had been hidden from the past, from past ages and generations, but now has been revealed to his saints, to whom God willed to make known what the wealth of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles is, the mystery that is Christ in you, the hope of glory. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his word. For his word is blessed, the children are blessed, and I'm just going to continue to minister this word unto the blessed children of God in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. All right, now listen. If you've been with us throughout the past few weeks, uh, I've been ministering to you, speaking to you from the theme of the Holy Spirit. Uh, last time we were together, we were talking about uh, becoming one, excuse me, becoming like Christ. And we know that the only way we can become like Christ is through the help of the Holy Spirit. So today I want to speak to you about from the theme of Christ in me, Christ in me. Now listen, as I said, I've been speaking to you about the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that allows us to know that Christ is in us. And we learned during the past few weeks that we've been speaking about the Holy Spirit. We've learned that the uh, primary job of the Holy Spirit is, is to make us or to help us to become like Christ. Amen. So, so he didn't come, the Holy Spirit. When I am say he, I want to let you know I'm talking about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity who is under a male uh, 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 gender. Okay. All right. So. He, talking about the Holy Spirit, he didn't come uh, uh, to make you uh, work in signs and wonders. Uh, uh, he didn't come to uh, uh, make you to prophesy. Uh, he didn't come to make you speak in tongues. All right, let me just help some people because I know some people tell me, they say, overseer, uh, I, 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 I believe that I was saved. I believe that I was born again, but I don't speak in tongues. And in the Bible said that these are... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, people, you knew they were saved because they demonstrated gifts of speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a gift. 
And it's a gift that God will give. And if he did not give you that gift, it does not negate you from being saved. Amen. And if you ask of that gift and the Lord see it's necessary for you to give you that gift, he'll give it to you. If you ask for a gift of interpretation of tongues and the Lord see it's necessary for you to have that, he will give you that also. Amen. Amen. So I don't want someone to feel left out thinking that you didn't have all that God said you were going to have. You do have Christ in you. Amen. You do have the Holy Spirit living in you. Amen. And that's the thing that we're talking about today. Christ in me. Christ in me. Now listen, as I said, the Holy Spirit didn't come to uh, make you do signs and wonders. He didn't come to uh, help you to prophesy. He didn't come to help you to speak in tongues. But uh, although that is his primary job, let me make that clear. He can and he will do that for you. But his primary job is to make us like Christ. He came to make us like Christ so that we can say Christ in me, Christ in me. Listen, when the Holy Spirit came, he also came and he made us holy. Now, when I say holy, I mean set apart. And when you're set apart, that means as you encounter uh, fellowship, as you uh, 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 invite the Holy Spirit into your prayer room, if you invite him into your daily life activity, you don't have to just uh, speak to the Holy Spirit when you're in your prayer room, but you should have a daily conversation with him. Now, other people may sit there and hear your conversation and think that you're losing your mind, but nevertheless... You can speak to the Spirit even in a quiet voice, in a still small voice, okay? You don't have to be loud and boisterous for the Holy Spirit to hear you. He is there. He's there right now. He's with you right now even as I'm talking. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what I'm saying to you is this. <clears throat> By holy, I mean uh, 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 as you, you're set apart and as you encounter or fellowship with the Holy Spirit, he will make you like Christ. The Holy Spirit will make you like Christ. Uh, he does it by uh, redefining you. Uh, uh, he does it by uh, transforming you and he does it by purifying you uh, uh, to live a life like Christ. He's going to help you He's going to redefine you. He's going to transform you so that you can live your life like Christ. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, he does this only by, uh, uh, he can only do this by conforming and transforming. The conforming and transforming work of the Holy Spirit can only be done through you when you allow him to have access to your life, when you spend time with him, fellowshipping, communion with the Holy Spirit. Then he has access to you and he begins to shape you and, and, and redefine you and transform you into the image of Christ, into the same walk of life that Christ had when he walked the earth in a natural form. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, uh, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 14 through 16 from the New American Standard Bible, and it reads as this. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lust, which were yours in ignorance, but be, excuse me, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. Hallelujah, glory to God. So you're getting an understanding now. The way to obtain holiness is not in your own strength. The way to obtain holiness is not through your own human wisdom, your own human intellect. No, the, the way to gain holiness is through fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. You got to do it with the Holy Spirit. You can't do it without him. You cannot make yourself holy. You cannot. Your own mind will not be able to comprehend the, uh, uh, the spiritual things, the carnal mind, the natural mind. It cannot understand. It cannot comprehend the things of the Spirit. So you need the thing of the Spirit, which is the main thing, which is the Holy Spirit, to help you, to shape you, to redefine you, to transform you into what? Into the image of Christ. Amen? Listen. This is why I stress to you, and God is more so stressing with you than I am. He's just using me as a vessel to tell you to spend time with the Holy Spirit. 
You, you, like I told you before, he's your co-worker. And when you go to your natural job, you spend time with your co-workers. You, 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 you go to lunch with some of them, you, you hang out with them and joke around with them on the job, and you probably just hang out with them after work, outside of the job, because they're your co-workers. You build a relationship with them. Well, if there's a co-worker that's living inside of you who's begging you. God gave him to you to spend time with you so that he can do these things to your life, in your life, to help you to become like Christ, to help you to become like Christ. So it's important for us to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And when you fellowship with him daily, when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit daily, that's when this holiness is going to come upon you. Holiness will now come upon you. You know, you hear me talk about holiness. Let me just take a few minutes to explain to you about what holiness is. Because most people, when they hear the word holiness, they automatically their mind focus to some sort, uh, uh, some sort of clothing or, or some sort of uh, uh, um, facial wear, makeup, hairs, and, uh, and things like that, nails. And, and, and they usually point it to, uh, more than likely, it's always going to, uh, uh, to defame women, to tell women what they can't and what they cannot do. Holiness is ascribed. Some men look at holiness and say, if I don't have on a white shirt, if my message is not in a white shirt, if I'm not, if I'm not wearing black, brown, or, 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 uh, um, or, 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 or gray, I'm not, con I'm not dressed holiness. I'm not dressed holy. Let me let you know something. Holiness is not about addressing, okay? Holiness is not about what you're wearing and makeup and all of that. No. Let me tell you something. Holiness simply means this, and this is the definition from the Word of God. Holiness is separation. Holiness is set apart. Amen? When you're separated from the world, God called us to come out of the world, be separate from the world, and come to Him. We are called out, the ecclesia, that's us. When you look over a doorway and it says exit, that's where we get the word exit from, from that word ecclesia, which means out. Exit means out. So we're called out. We're called out. We're called uh, out of the world uh, into holiness with God. Holiness is walking with God, and it's allowing him, God, the Holy Spirit, it's allowing him to have total access to every area of our lives. This is the only way we can stay separated. Now listen, we have jobs that we do, everything, you know, some people are so super spiritual that they're always caught up in the air. Oh, you can't get them to do anything on the ground because they're so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good. But even when we interact with those in the physical, we are still separated. You're, you're, you're not supposed to do everything that the world does. Amen. And when I'm saying that, listen, you can go to the restaurant and eat like the world does. All right. Let's, let's be real about the thing. Some people just take things so uh, super literal, that they make it seem like that you can't do anything in Christ. This is why they don't want to be a Christian, because they, they, they don't know what it's like, so therefore they judge by what they think, and therefore they separate themselves from all the things that God created. All things were created by him, for him, and since you're in Christ in you, it's created for us. But we do things in moderation, amen? We do things according to the holiness that is in us, that, that God ascribed to us when he called us out. All right, let me explain this to you like this. Listen, as I said, holiness is walking with God and it's allowing him to have total access to every area of our lives. Uh, um, first Peter, the one we read in the opening scripture, first Peter uh, 14, 16 from the New American Standard Bible, it says, because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. My brothers and sisters, allow me to share something with you. This is not the first time uh, 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 uh. The Hebrews had heard that they were to be holy. This is not the first time that those who were Hebrew were told that they should be set apart for God. The Hebrews knew it, but you and I, the new converts, the Gentiles, we did not know this. So this is why Peter tells it to us in 1 Peter. He's not speaking to the Hebrews because they should have known that. He's telling you and I that, listen, it is written, because it is written, you shall, Michael, shall be holy, for I, the Lord, am holy. What do you mean the Hebrews knew about it? The Hebrews knew because they had it in the Old Testament. You know, um, you got to remember Jesus. All right, let me explain. Let me, let me help you out as we walk through the scriptures. Listen to this. John 1 and 1 from the New American Standard Bible, and it reads as such. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 14, New American Standard Bible, and he reads, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory as the only Son from the Father, 
full of grace and truth. Now, if you look at John 1 and 1, and you look at John 1, 14, John was speaking about Jesus. He's given us a description about Jesus. He says, in the beginning was the word, Jesus. He's saying that the word was with God, Jesus. He's saying that the word was God, Jesus. He's saying, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. Amen. So now if we go back to the Old Testament and we look and we hear what Jesus tells Moses in the book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 2 from the New American Standard Bible. And it reads this. He says, speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel and say to them, you shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God am holy. My brothers and sisters, that makes it plain to us that the Hebrews of the Old Testament knew what we, the new converts of the Gentiles, did not know. First of all, we did not know that God was looking to have a relationship with the Israelites. We didn't know because we didn't have access to what we have access through now, which is the, um, the Bible. You should have your own Bible in your home. You should have hopefully more than one or through your internet devices or whatever it is. You should have your electronic devices. You should have access to the Bible. There's no excuse for you to say, I don't have one. There's no excuse. The excuse was back then, we didn't have access because we weren't included when they went to the synagogue, when they came into the, the scribes, the Pharisees, they had the access to the word of God and they delivered it to the people as such. But the Bible lets us see here in the book of Leviticus that when God called the tent meeting, he, God, told um, Moses to tell the, uh, 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 he said, this is the relationship that I want to have with the Israelites. And he told Moses to go and give them these instructions to the entire community of Israel. Go and tell them. He says, you must be holy because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Listen, when I, I, I tell you about Jesus, because you got to remember now, and I just gave you those scriptures, you're saying, well, God was speaking to them. It wasn't Jesus. Jesus wasn't there. In the beginning was the word, Jesus. All right. The word was with God. So when God called Moses to the meeting, it was Jesus. Amen. And Jesus was always telling them what? That the word was God. So when they had the word, Jesus is speaking to them there. And he spoke to them when he walked the earth. He's telling them, he says, listen, I just want a fellowship with you. I just want you to be holy. Be like I am. But they had so many problems. The scribes and the Pharisees becoming like Christ. They couldn't do it. They saw Jesus as a, a blasphemer. They saw Jesus in league with Satan. They saw Jesus as a wine bibber. They said he hung out with, with all the undesirables of the day. They could not see themselves being like Jesus, who was and is holy. So now it's given unto you and I. That same text is given to us. Uh, uh, we can go and look at it from Leviticus from the Old Testament, but it just mirrors what we heard in the New Testament. From what? From Peter. Peter's telling us what? That you shall be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. God doesn't deviate from his word. He doesn't deviate. And this is what he expects us to do. God was calling his people into a relationship with him. Jesus wanted to fellowship with those when he walked the earth. He never discouraged anybody, even the Pharisees. He never told them, get away from me. He never told them, I, I, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. Even though he knew that they were wrong as two left shoes on their feet. But he always wants, God always wants to have a fellowship with us. And he calls us holy. He calls us out of the world that we may uh, uh, walk alongside him. That we may be as he is. We've already heard heard these teachings. Uh, Jesus and the Father are one and we are one with them. We've already heard that. So now when uh, understanding in order for Christ to be in me, Christ in me, I have to be like Christ was. I have to be holy. I have to be holy. For the Lord your God is holy. I have to be holy. I have to be like him. I, I, I haven't arrived. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. So, so, so how does this happen? Jesus came to, when he was, came to the earth, he came to bring us back into the right relationship with the Father. One, a right relationship, one that was considered to be holy. He wanted us to be holy before God, before God. Listen, 
if you have any understanding about the uh, Old Testament, when the uh, scribes, when the Pharisees, when they went into the holies of holies to meet with God, they had to make sure their self was right. They couldn't just walk in any kind of way. They had to make sure they were holy. There was a purification process that they went through. It, it, even before they began to give the word, they had to wash their hands. There was a purification. And this is what Jesus represented also. When you read the scriptures and you see Jesus wash his hands before he... Listen, I can get back to that another time. I want you to... I, I see time is moving. There's so much I want to talk to you about. But listen, when... Jesus walked the earth. He was there to bring us back to a right relationship with God, back to a right relationship with the Father. And that relationship was a oneness. That relationship was consistent of being holy, holiness to God. So holiness now is not about how I'm dressed. Because as I said, when they went in to the holies of holies, if they weren't right, they had to drag, they put bells on them so they would know where they were. And they had to drag them back out. Some of them went in and they weren't right. And they had to get pulled out. They died in the presence of God. But because of Jesus, hallelujah, because of the Christ in me, because of the Holy Spirit, because of the blood that was shed, we now have access into the throne room where we could not go before. And God will only, you can only have that audience with God because he sees you as holy. He sees you. You don't have to worry about getting into the presence of God and dropping dead because some of us would be, maybe not you. Some of us would be, I would be, because I know that I'm not there. I, 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 I haven't arrived, but I can come boldly into the throne room of grace and into God's throne room because of what Jesus has done for me, because of the blood that covers me. I have to come past that blood. I have to come through that blood in order for me to get into God's presence. Other than that, it ain't going to happen. It ain't. So we thank God because of this now. We're on the road to holiness, to, to uh, Christ in me, means that the holiness of Christ must be in me. It must be in me. Now listen, when I'm saying holiness, when we are so close to the Holy Spirit, holiness, be, uh, uh, we begin because of the holiness, because walking and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, we begin to uh, reflect our image now begins to reflect that of Christ. And this is what God wants to see in you and I. He wants to see Christ in you. He wants to see it. Uh, holiness is being so close to the Holy Spirit that you begin to reflect your, your, your facade begins to look like Christ. When you're in a close relationship with the Holy Spirit, you begin to act like Jesus. When you're in a close relationship with the Holy Spirit, not only do you begin to act like Jesus, but I'm saying acting because you begin to forgive like Jesus. And there's some people who holding on to things that happened from the time when you was a child on the playground, but you've never let that go. But when you allow yourself to be, to allow the Holy Spirit to come now, to transform you, to conform you into the image of Christ, you will start to look to say that those things that bother you really don't bother you anymore. And you should put those things down. Leave that child school stuff back there on the playground because you could become now to look like Christ you become now to sound like Christ you can forgive like Christ and you can pray like Christ this is what is going to happen because you become now Christ in me he's in me and if he's in me then I have to pick up his attributes I have to carry myself as though Christ is living in me that means sometimes you can't hear all the conversations that's going on around it may be funny to them but they haven't been called out. They haven't been separated to God. They think their holiness is in their fashion. But you're getting an understanding now about what true holiness is. True holiness is to be separated out of the world and jointly connected to Christ, to God. Listen, when you're in a close relationship with Christ, you're going to sound like him. You're going to look like him. You're going to walk like him. You're going to, you're going to reflect everything that Christ did. And the Bible tells us this. It says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among them. And we saw his glory as the glory of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Well, guess what? When Jesus walked the earth, uh, uh, the fullness, all divinity was found in him. And that same thing should be found in you and I also. We should be walking the earth full of grace, full of truth. Why, why, why do you have to lie? What are you lying about? Why? 
you should be full of grace. God is giving grace to you, and you're supposed to also show grace to others. God has forgiven you, so you should also forgive others. You, 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 you're catching it now. This is, this is what the Word of God does. He corrects us. He helps us to see what it is that he wants us to be, not what we want to be. And if you're saying, I'm with Christ, then you're going to be like Christ. Christ in me. Christ in me. Because why? Because when Jesus walked the earth, he was fully God and fully man, walking in a man's body. And the flesh that he created, he was wearing it. Fully God, yet fully man. And, and guess what? Here's the good news. That same God, that same Christ, is now in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. The hope of glory. Listen, it was God who was working in Jesus. It was God who was working in Jesus when Jesus walked the streets of Jerusalem. When Jesus was doing all those mighty miracles that he did, he said, I'm not doing them on my own, but it's my Father. It's the Father. It's the will of the Father for me to do. It's the will of the Father for me to say. He didn't do anything of his own accord. And what did he tell us also about the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit will not teach you. He will not give you anything of his own accord. He's going to remind you. He's going to stick to the script, which is what Jesus did when he was here. He did what the Father had given him to do. The Holy Spirit is going to keep you to do what the Father, to do what Jesus uh, uh, expects you and I to do. Jesus said he's not going to deviate. He's not going to go on his own and give you this, that, and the other. He's going to stick to the script. So in sticking to the script that was already written, this is how we are to carry out our lives with Christ in me. I should, I should sound like Christ. I should look like Christ. I should speak like Christ. I should forgive like Christ. My heart should be like Christ. I should be, I should, yes, you got to humble yourself. That's what he's really telling you. You got to humble yourself. I told you before, God, God is not uh, 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 excited about you as you are excited about yourself. He's not. He's expecting you to do these things. And when you do, as God says, yes, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, those who diligently go before him. And, and, and you know, some people always ask me, they say, well, overseer, how do I know? I just want to make sure that God is pleased with what I'm doing. You know, I, I just want to make sure because I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And how do I know that God is really pleased with me? And I'm asking you, if that's you, I'm, let me help you out. When you do these things, are you doing what you do according to faith? If you're moving by faith, the Bible tells us that God is pleased with you. He said that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And your life is built on faith. And everything that you do, you're doing it in a faith walk. Then God is pleased with you. He is pleased with you. Amen? So you don't have to worry about whether or not you're too good, you're not that. You're... Listen, just do what God asks you to do. And, and, and he's the one who's going to elevate you. He's the one that's going to correct you. He's the one, the Holy Spirit in you, in you, Christ in you, in you. Listen, I told you, when Jesus said that he was walking the earth, when he did everything that Jesus did, he did it when he walked the streets of Jerusalem, all the miracles he did, he did it because of the Father. The Father gave him access to do it. And it's the same with you and I. Having received the Holy Spirit, Christ now lives in you. And guess what? Not only does Christ live in you, but you become the temple. You become the place where the living God dwells. He dwells in you. Not uh, uh, the building that we go to to worship where we all come together for our corporate worship. No, God is dwelling in a building not made by man's hands. Man's hands didn't make this, didn't make yours. God does. And God dwells in that temple, in that temple. Listen. When, when you're getting an understanding of that, now you're getting an understanding. Having received the Holy Spirit, we have been called out of the world. We're separated. We're the ecclesia. We are the, uh, uh, the holy ones, consecrated, set apart. We are the holy ones. We've been called out of the world. We've been called out of darkness. And we're free from bondage. And we're free from idol worshiping like the world. You're free from all of that. Because God called us out. He separated us. He, God, classifies us. He makes us holy. Amen? Listen. Not only is Christ dwelling within us, but the Bible makes it plain to us that we've become the temple. Christ now is dwelling in me. Christ in me. And he lives in me. He has a temple established in me. And if you say that he lives in you, then he has a temple in you. 
What are you saying, overseer? I've never realized that. I never understood that. Well, let me read the scripture to you. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 from the New American Standard Bible, and it reads as such. Or what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I dwell among them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Hallelujah, glory to God. We are everything that God intended us to be, based on that scripture. We, what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? We ain't got no idols. Uh, you may say that's not proper English. Okay, we don't have any idols. At least I don't. Amen. Your car is not your idol. Your children are not your idol. Your, your job is not your idol. Your money is not your idol. Your, your, your family members, no matter what it is, you should have no idols. God said, put no other gods before me. He called you out of the world. He separated you. And some people still may have idols. You have your crystals. You have your stones. You have your tarot cards. You have everything else. But that's not what God intended you to have. God says, on what agreement does the temple of God have with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Just as Overseer Armstrong said, no. Just as God said, I will dwell among them and walk among them and I will be their God and they will be my people. Hallelujah, glory to God. Do you hear the words of Jesus? When Jesus is speaking, he's saying, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Do you see the oneness now again? The Father, Son, the Spirit and us, we are all one in Christ. Christ in me lets me know that I'm one with Christ and he dwells within me. He walks within me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I'm his own. Yes, he dwells within you. Not in a temple made by man's hands, but in you, in the temple that God created. Hallelujah, glory to God. Christ in me means that Jesus is walking in me. Christ in me means that Jesus is talking to me. Christ in me means that Jesus is with you even today. Hallelujah, glory to God. From the day you accepted Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, he said, I'll never leave you. Now, you may try to pull him up out of you. <laughs> I don't know why, but, but he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And he says that even when the enemy comes upon you, he cannot bind up that strong man, that Christ in you. He can never do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you, you have to understand who you are and what authority he has in you. You live in a glorious life, whether or not you realize it. Listen to this. Listen to this. Christ in me, when I say Christ in me, I'm talking about you too, because I, I believe you want to take ownership of it. So when I say Christ in me, don't, don't get offended. Just take ownership of it. Hold on to it and say, hold, hold, hold on over here. Christ is in me too. He's in me too. I hope he is. I hope he is. And only you and Christ really know that, okay? But let me tell you something. Christ in me means that every time you're ministering, every time I'm ministering to someone about Jesus, that's God's work. God's work now is uh, uh, alive and is being activated through me, through you. Anytime we step outside of our own comfort zone and we begin to share the good news of the gospel with somebody, we're now allowing the Christ in you to begin to be activated the Holy Spirit will lead you and you'll begin to go and you'll start sharing this word of God amongst people and you'll start witnessing them. That's what it means. Christ in me means that, that Jesus now is in me and because Jesus is in me, I get to take Jesus into this world. I get to take Jesus into the world and I get to impact the world through the Christ that's in me. I introduce him to people who've never known him or some who have known him because we have uh, uh, many brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And when we get together, we get to fellowship. The, uh, I think it's Psalm 133 and, and verse three, uh, um, yeah, Psalm 133 tells us how uh, good and pleasant it is when, for brothers to come to dwell together in unity. It's like the, the precious oil flowing down off of Aaron, uh, down to his beard and onto the... This is what it is when we get together as saints. When we meet, I know some people don't want to believe that you're a saint, but you are. You are a saint. You don't have to follow that 
uh, a big C Catholic denomination where they send in letters to say, well, it depends on what the board says, whether or not this person can be included for a saint. No, you're a saint because God already claimed you to be a saint. Amen. So when, when the saints of God, you and I, when we get together, we fellowship, we have a time because we are fellowshipping, we're communion. When we go to our meetings, we're in communion one to another. Our spirit is that of God. And when we get together, we're excited about what God is doing in our lives. And we begin to uh, plot how we can take what God has given us and give it to the world. We're not casting our pearl before swine, but we're allowing the world to know that there's a better way. There's another way. You don't have to continue on that way. You can get separated from the world. You can live a holy life like we are. We are holy. We are holy people. We are the ones set apart to do the work that God commissioned us to do. Amen? So when you get to understanding of this, now you're saying, yes, Christ is in me. And wherever it is I go, I take Jesus with me and I turn him loose on the world. And I know that he's going to impact somebody's life. Why? Because he did mine. He did it to me. And I know that he's no respecter of person. For if he did it for me, he can do it for you. And even greater, even greater, even greater. Listen, listen. When we get this understanding that Christ is in me, then I guess what? Now I can go, uh, uh, Christ in me, throw through Jesus, uh, uh, I bring sinners out of darkness into his marvelous light. I share this good word, the good news of, uh, of the gospel to sinners. And by doing so, it now brings them out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Now, some may be on the cusp of, and they may say, like, uh, uh, hey, you know, you almost made me a believer. I, I'm, I'm, I was feeling that. I'm feeling that, overseer. I was with you. I was with you. But I'm not ready to make that commitment. That's all right. I did my part. You see, one will plant, another's going to water, but God's going to get the increase. I threw the seed, and it's up to God now. Even though, unless, unless they just left it right there, that they're not going to be the last time that somebody will else come to them and, and bring them the same message of the good news of what God wants to do in their life. So it doesn't matter. You just do what Jesus tells you to do because he's in you, Christ in you. And allow the Holy Spirit to lead you so that you can make an impact into this world. So you can take Jesus to make an impact. So you can bring sinners out of darkness into God's marvelous light. So the only way that's going to be possible, the only way you can make this happen is through the Holy Spirit. Because Christ dwells in you. Because he dwells in you, because he dwells in me, he, Christ now, we become an extension and he's rep, we're representing him throughout the world. Everywhere we go, we're taking Christ and we're depositing him here. We're depositing him there. We're, we're just sharing the good news. And it's only possible because the Holy Spirit that lives in us. How is it possible? How is it possible, overseer? I still don't understand it. It seems like it's a mystery. Yes, it does. To the world, it's a mystery. But the mystery has been made known. you got to remember, how is it possible? Because a lot of people, even the world, they're trying to understand the spiritual thing with a carnal mind. And it'll never happen. It's a mystery of which was hidden. The Bible tells us it's a mystery of that which was hidden for ages. It's a mystery for that which was hidden for generations. And the mystery that which was hidden from angels and, and from men. The Bible lets us know that this mystery has now been revealed to God's holy people. You and I, we're holy. And now this mystery has been revealed to us. And it's simple. The holy people, the saints of God, you and I, this is what the word calls us. He calls us holy. God calls us saints. And he lets us know that the word has been revealed to us. It's been revealed to them, to us, whom God was pleased to make known how great for, uh, uh, how great for the Gentiles, you and I. How great for us to, that, to know that uh the riches of glory, the mystery, this mystery, that Christ in you, the hope of glory. It was a mystery for ages. It was a mystery for generations. It was a mystery even to the angels because they did not know what? They did not know how great it was that God had this thing already set up from the beginning of the foundation for the Gentiles, you and I, to be included in his plan of eternal life. This is the, 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 the plan that the, the, the Gentiles were going to be included in the riches of the glory of this great mystery. What is the mystery? The mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Christ in you means eternal life. Not when you're stretched out in that casket before your church friends or whatever it may be, however you choose to go. But you have eternal life as of this very moment. From the moment you said yes 
you received eternal life. In reality, now that you have your boarding pass, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, when you pass through this life, you don't spend a life of damnation separated from God because God has already separated you from the world. So you'll spend your eternity, eternal life in the presence of God the Father, in the presence of Jesus the Son. And the Holy Spirit will just, uh, I'm believing that he's just going to be right there in the midst of it all. Hallelujah, glory to God. So you don't have to worry about that. Eternal life means uh, 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 life, uh, your natural life is over. You'll spend eternity, your eternal life in God's presence, in the presence of God. You know, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 from the New American Standard Bible, and it reads like this. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Listen to that. These things were written. What things? The word of God. You have this word written to you. These things out of the word of God were written to you, written to I, written to us who believe. Believe what? These things were written to those who believe in the name of the Son of God, who is what? Jesus. Everything points back to Jesus. You can't get away from him. And I hope you don't want to. I really do. But if you do, that's up to you. There's been others who just said, no, I can't handle this Christianity walk. And they decided that, hey, this ain't for me. Well, we already know. You, 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 you're the one that blots your name out the book of the Lamb's life. But let me let you know something. The Bible lets us know that these things were written to those who believe in the name of the Son of God. That name is Jesus. Those who believe in Jesus, those who believe in the name of Jesus, they have, we have eternal life. We have it. Why? You, I didn't labor for it. No, because you believe. You mean to tell me I didn't have to work for it? I didn't have to foam at the mouth? I didn't have to hop around on one foot? I didn't have to beg God for it? All I had to do was believe. Believe. That's it. That's why some people cannot fathom Christianity because they're, they're caught up into other uh, religions that they came from, religions that they're in. And for them just to have opportunity to know that all I have to do is believe in my heart, believe it, and I can receive it, eternal life. That's it. People miss out on heaven because they will not come to believe. They will not. These things were written to those who believe in the name of the Son of God, Jesus. Those who believe in the name of Jesus have eternal life. The scripture doesn't say those who might believe may have eternal life. This is not a wish list. This is the word of God. God is not hoping to give you eternal life. You have that life now as a result of your belief in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. You didn't work for anything. You have it because of your belief in the name of Jesus. Listen, I write these things to those who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. That's why it's written. If you believe it, you have eternal life. If you don't read the word, then you'll never know what God also written for you. There's so many blessings in God's word for you. And if you don't read the word, then you'll never get it. You'll never get it. And you probably never knew about this. But there it is right there in front of you. 1 John 5.13. That's why it was written. So that you can believe. For those who believe. You want to have eternal life? And you might have said, well, I came down the aisle when they, when they said, who, uh, uh, anybody want to receive Jesus? I came down the aisle, Overseer Armstrong, you, you said that every week at the end of your messages. You, you give an invitation for those to come to the body of Christ, but I, I, I wasn't sure about it. I wasn't sure whether or not uh, 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 I had Jesus in me. I wasn't sure whether or not I received the whole uh, eternal life. Listen, 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 calm down. The Bible lets us know Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you means that God is alive and at work in you. The Spirit of God dwells in you. Because Christ is in you, 
He wants you to know that you're more than just an ordinary human being. And this is why I tell you all the time, I'm not an ordinary preacher. I'm an extraordinary preacher with an extraordinary message from an extraordinary God, and it's from an extraordinary people. And if you're an extraordinary person, then you can ride along with me because now you're receiving that which God has for you. This is going to separate you. This makes you holy. This is the thing that God called you out of the world so that you can receive this, receiving eternal life. And you cannot get it if you don't have Christ in you, if you don't have him in you. But these things were written so that you may know, for that you may believe that you may have eternal life in the name of the Son of God, Jesus. Jesus. Your, your human life, if you will, your human life is being transformed even now as you're hearing this word. Your human life is being transformed by the life and the nature of Christ. This is what God is protect, pro projecting us to be like Christ. This divine life in you is only made possible through your fellowshipping, through your oneness with the Holy Spirit. Christ in you means that God has called us out of the world and brought us into himself. You know, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 from the Amplified Classic, it says it like this. For his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a dynamic spiritual life and godliness throughout Excuse me, through true and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Listen, Christ in you means that through the divine power of the Holy Spirit, God has granted us absolutely everything pertaining to a dynamic spiritual life of godliness. Other version says that God has granted us everything pertaining to life and godliness. How? Through the Holy Spirit, through Christ in us. Christ in you means that we've been called to a life of honor. We've been called to a life of heavenly uh, dignity. And we've been called to a life of excellence. That means, therefore, it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. doesn't matter what your situation is. doesn't matter the... the uh, the desert that you're finding yourself traveling through right now. I'm praying as I'm talking that you're traveling through because God didn't call you to die in the desert. He didn't cause you to die in the wilderness, but he's taking you somewhere. Amen. So it doesn't matter what your situation is that you find yourself in right now because Christ in you, because of Christ is in you, your life now is a life of honor. Because of Christ in you, your life now is a life of dignity. Your life is a life of excellence. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're not not an ordinary person you're an extraordinary person because Christ is not ordinary he's extraordinary and he's living in you Christ in you means that God called us and he called us by his own glory he called us by his own excellence that means that Christ in you means that you're not living a mediocre life you're not living an ordinary life you're an extraordinary person living an extraordinary life because you're you have an extraordinary God that lives in you Christ in you the hope of glory hallelujah glory to his name listen 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 I got to get out of here I see the time is moving let me just share this with you first Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 12 from the New American Standard Bible and it says this so that you would walk in a manner worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory the Apostle Paul tells us, he says that we are encouraging you. We're encouraging you. We're comforting you. And this is, listen, we're keep on, we're going to keep on urging you that you live the kind of life that pleases God. We're going to continue to encourage you. We're going to continue to comfort you. That as you live the life that God called you, one that God calls you to share. God calls us to share our life in his kingdom we're living in the kingdom right now for we've already heard that the kingdom of heaven is at hand it's not on its way it's here now and god called us to live a glorious excellent life in his kingdom not when we're in the heavens but while we're on this earth realm now and that means that christ in you has given you a glorious kingdom life hallelujah glory to god how could you live an ordinary life when you know that there's an extraordinary god living inside of you therefore like i said it doesn't matter 
matter. There can be some dark days. There can be some gloomy days. And you may go through something as you're going through right now. But guess what? You are. Uh, you should be unruffled or unfazed by the things that are going on in the world because God has called us out of the world. Listen. And when you understand that, you understand that there's only two directions that you're going to take in your life. Two directions. You're going to go upward and you're going to go forward. You're moving forward and you're going upward. That's it. You're not going down. You're not going back. You are in this world, but you're not of this world. Hallelujah. Your path is different than anybody else that's not a born-again believer. You may be living amongst them. You may be working amongst them, but that is not your path. Your path has two directions, and that's forward and upward. You're going forward, and you're going upward in Jesus' mighty name. My brothers and sisters, I, I, I want to be able to go on with you, but I see time is moving, so I have to end this right now before I don't get time to pray you out of here. And if you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm giving you the opportunity to do so now. If you ever wondered whether or not you have eternal life, I read you the scriptures and you have it before you now. So therefore, if you never received eternal life and you would like to have it, all you have to do is believe in your heart and confess it out of your mouth that Jesus, the Son of God, hallelujah, if you can believe that Jesus died for your sins and the sins of this world, don't worry about the sins of the world. He died for your sins. If you can believe it and confess it out of your mouth, then you receive that eternal life and it's available to you. And you just received it now. You just received Jesus. So we thank God for you. We thank God for you. I thank God for those who came today that stayed with us. I know some people bounce in and bounce out because of the data and they can't afford to uh, stay online. But nevertheless, we pray God that he'll move you to a better place where you're able to meet, uh, have your need met. Amen. For those who are here right now, let us just pray out of here. I thank you for coming to fellowship with us. As I said, I know you could be doing something different with your time. I pray that you were blessed through this message. I pray that you have a, a more of a clearer understanding about the Christ in you, Christ in me. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those right now who came, who assembled themselves. Father, I pray right now that you will help them to stir up the gift that's within inside of them, Lord, that they may see themselves as more than conquerors, that they may see themselves as they look in the mirror and see Christ in them, the hope of glory. Father, that they may see themselves doing even greater works than Christ has done when he walk this earth. Father, continue to touch them, Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to stir them up uh, from the inside outward, Lord, that everywhere they go, they may know that Christ is with them and help them to take Christ into this dying world, to allow this dying world to know that there's a Savior who doesn't want them to die in their sins, but he's called them out of darkness into, their mar into his marvelous light, and his name is Jesus. For Father, I'm asking that you will bless, cover, and keep these now in Christ Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen again. Amen again. Again. again, I thank you for coming to fellowship with us. I pray that you were blessed through this message. Share this message. Tell somebody else what Manna from Heaven Ministry is doing. If you're being blessed through this message, then share somebody. Let them know because they also should be receiving this blessing too. I thank you. And as you go through the rest of this week, as you go through the rest of this month, as we go through the rest of this year, don't you forget to make time for God because God has already made time for you. Amen. Amen. If you're being blessed by the words from Manna from Heaven Ministries and would like to give a donation, please give to the following links. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.